It's the year 2017. You'd think climate change would have heard our cries for death and burned us all to a crisp already. Maybe some TV will help get my mind off the cold. <laughs> What is going on? Hey! The year 2016 was a year full of downs, ups, downs, and downs. The host of The Apprentice became the leader of a whole country. Zootopia was released. A shit ton of beloved celebrities died. The world got an avocado emoji. But I think the biggest part of 2016 was the memes. Harambe. Dat Boy. The Nutshack. Never knowing what is gonna come through that door. And, of course, the smash hit from Robbie and the Rottens, We Are Number One. Let's have some context here. Lazy Town was an Icelandic children's television show that aired from 2004 to 2007, and again from 2013 to 2014 for weird reasons involving the production of all four seasons. It stars a bunch of actors with crazy Icelandic names, depicting the children of Lazy Town, who are almost all puppets for some reason, who learn to eat, ride, and exercise with the help of a healthy but otherwise not all that impressive superhero named Spartacus! And no thanks to a lazy, incompetent pseudo-villain, Robbie Rotten played by the shockingly handsome Stefan Carl. The show has been a meme for years, ever since You Are a Pirate came out, and fans of the pedo bear meme creeped after the pink-haired protagonist, Stephanie. Since then, mashups and edits of tons of songs and scenes from the show have graced the internet in a pretty constant stream. In October of 2016, Stefan Carl posted to the internet that he was battling pancreatic cancer. A GoFundMe was put up in his name to raise $100,000 since he's been too sick to work. It was then that We Are Number One was skyrocketed into mass memedom, and awareness of the GoFundMe was spread through tons of edits and mashups that have been filling both YouTube and SoundCloud lately. But here's the thing. Internet pedophiles and cancer fundraisers aren't usually enough to make a true meme out of something. Lazy Town memes have been gracing the internet since as early as 2011, and probably before that. Typically, a TV show only gets that sort of meme treatment if it's really good or really bad. So which is it? To answer that, I think it's only fair to look at the episode that We Are Number One stemmed from, an episode from the final season of Lazy Town titled Robbie's Dream Team. Keep in mind, this is my first time ever actually watching an episode of Lazy Town. I've never seen an episode before this, so we're tackling the son of a bitch blind. Let's get started. The first 30 seconds of the episode before the opening even begins consists of Sporticus balancing on a ball, after which he says, If you believe in yourself, anything is possible. <laughs> yeah, my fat ass will take your word for it, buddy. The opening theme is all right. It's literally 20 seconds long, so there's not really much to talk about there. After the opening, the story begins. There's a 10 second segment in which a man who I'm assuming is the mayor is pampering some lady, and then the scene cuts to Sporticus flying, and then running, and then the scene cuts away again. Yeah, I'm getting the feeling that the rapid scene transitions are a regular thing on this show. There's nothing really wrong with it per se, it just gets a little dizzying after a few minutes. Anyway, it turns out that the great and powerful Robbie Rotten is setting up a trap to catch... to kill him, I guess? So that all the children of Lazy Town will stop being active and become morbidly obese. Good job being body positive, Robbie. Proud of you. Sporticus sees the hole because he's not a fucking idiot, leaps over it, and politely greets Robbie as he runs past. This is some serious Christian Bale Heath Ledger superhero action going on, and I am at the edge of my seat. But of course, we cut back to these two. The lady asks for an apple, and instead of going into his house to get one, he asks his niece and Steve Buscemi over here, who are sneaking around like a couple of little shits playing spies, to scour the town until they find a tree with an apple in it. It is here that I assume that there are no stores in Lazy Town and everyone survives off of subsistence farming. While searching for an apple, the two, who refer to one another as Agent Pink and Agent Mine, which is so dumb it's funny, encounter Robbie setting up another trap for the awkwardness in this scene as Robbie tells them he's trying to catch an invisible bird and they offer to help him is, I gotta say, pretty friggin' hilarious. Stefan Carl's acting is very purposefully over the top, and it's just damn funny. I'm trying to uh, catch the biggest invisible bird in the world. Of course, the trap fails, and Robbie gets the idea, which was actually the kid's idea, to recruit some help. 
He orders villains over the phone, and we get introduced to Bobby Rotten, Tobby Rotten, and Flobby Rotten, three incompetent performers who are basically less annoying versions of minions. And now you know their names. Robbie and the Rottens begin planning how to get rid of that sport of floppity flip and his flippity floppity. <laughs> but the Rottens get easily confused. All right, I can see that I will have to teach you how to be villains. Cue the music! We are number one! But it's in the middle of a review and there's no ear rape. No, I'm not playing the whole thing. You've seen it. Granted, the version in the episode is a bit different. The apple scene isn't until later. We'll get to that. The segment in the actual episode mostly just consists of Robbie and the Rottens fucking up plan after plan. Immediately following the music video, we cut back to Stephanie and Stingy, which is his actual name, still searching for apples, which they refer to as sports candy for some reason. They finally find one single apple on a branch. Stephanie goes to get a ladder to reach it, and Stingy goes to get his... car? Wait, isn't he a kid? Do kids drive in this universe? Or does Stephanie just hang around with an adult with dwarfism? Are they all adults? Is Stephanie an adult? Am I an adult? Back to Robbie and the Rottens, who have just gotten done forming a perfectly realistic apple out of pure sugar. Apparently, when Sporticus eats sugar, he goes into a sugar meltdown and is powerless. I guess it makes sense that Sugar would be the kryptonite of a superhero whose power is being athletic and healthy, but I really do wonder if any little kids watching this episode would take this seriously and assume any time Mom gave them an Oreo she was trying to kill them. Robbie disguises himself as an elderly woman and convinces Sporticus to assist him across the street as Stingy drives by in a teeny little car. That's actually pretty cute. Robbie presents Sporticus with the sugar apple as a reward for helping him, and Sporticus collapses onto the pavement after one bite like he just swallowed a bathtub full of date rape drugs. It's a little unsettling. Slightly more unsettling is the fact that since this is the first time Robbie has ever actually managed to catch Sporticus, he has no idea what to do next, and just has his minions take Sporticus down to his lair in a cage while he goes to think out the rest of his plan. Okay. <sighs> Instead of waiting for Stephanie to get the ladder, Stingy decides to climb the tree like a fucking moron and gets stuck. Stephanie helps him down, but they wonder why Sporticus never came to their rescue. Rather than assuming that Sporticus has gotten sick of their stupid bullshit, they conclude that he's been captured. Hmm. Meanwhile, after an awkwardly sexual bit with a saxophone, Robbie's minions are seen keeping watch over an unconscious but are having trouble staying awake, which absolutely nobody expected after they were instructed not to fall asleep. Robbie, thinking by himself, gets the idea to shoot Sporticus out of town in a cannon. Stephanie and Stingy over here and manage to get an apple to fall down a periscope and right into Sporticus's reach among the sleeping minions. The apple restores Sporticus's slightly above average strength, and he wakes the minions up and challenges them to a soccer game. They agree and let him out because they're fucking stupid, and this is Lazy Town and good triumphs overall. <laughs> Robbie sees them playing and flips shit, accidentally setting off the timer on his cannon and being shot into the air. Rather than let nature take its course, Sporticus plays lawful good and opts to rescue the man who was constantly trying to kill slash mildly annoy him. The minions quit, saying that it's more fun to play sports than be a villain, Stingy pulls a bag of apples out of his ass, and a completely unrelated but still pretty catchy song plays as the characters dance and a clip show is shown that shows the episode we just watched. At the end of it all, Robbie is shot to the moon, presumably left for dead. So that was Lazy Town. Is it worthy of its meme status? Yeah, I'd say so. While the plot and characters are a little too one-dimensional and saccharine to be considered as ageless as other children's shows, such as My Little Pony or The Lion Guard, the musical numbers are surprisingly good and catchy, and Stefan Carl's over-the-top acting got a chuckle out of me in almost every scene. I like it, but I wouldn't binge watch the whole series. Mm, okay, I might binge watch the whole series. The show itself is pretty good for kids. As far as I can tell, it's perfectly innocent, and each episode has something to do with eating right and staying active, something we could all stand to learn a bit more about. 
The morals in this episode, though, were a bit ambiguous. I don't know if each episode tries to teach a specific lesson or not, but this one doesn't really do that. If anything, the morals here are something along the lines of, playing sports is more fun than staring at unconscious men, and don't order cheap copies of yourself over the phone without a money-back guarantee, with general themes of teamwork throughout, which is good enough for me. I'll be ranking and grading this episode of Lazy Town using the world's most prized items, acorns, and I'll be judging it based on plot, characters, dialogue, acting, and morals. Robbie's Dream Team scores a C for children will like this, and you might too if you're high. Now that that's over and done with, I want to say thanks for checking out what's pretty much the pilot episode of Vermin Report. If this generally goes over well, I'll start making videos like this on a regular basis and cover all sorts of video games and movies and TV shows both good and bad. If you like or dislike the video, be sure to weigh in and leave a comment if you have any tips or suggestions for future videos. Thanks! Now get out of my house. Bing bang, take a rig a dong, silly word.